share the screen? Yes, yes, sir. You can uh, share your screen. Yeah, I'm sharing. Host disable participant screen sharing. You have to allow. Uh, sir, you have joined from panelist link. No. Yes, sir, you are co-host. Uh, Mr. Manish, could you please help uh, Dr. Ali? Good morning to all. I'll call our IT team. Okay. 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 This has to be on the Sir, so now you are a co-host. You can uh, share your screen. U.S. comes about. Ja Janu ji, I have given the right to sir actually. Please, sir can able to share their screen. Yes, yes. Thank you, Manish ji. Instant energy to talk. Uh, first open the PPT and then you go to the share screen option and then you can able to share the screen. All not there. Yeah. The is also not considered to have kept all options. You can share your query, we will guide you. Okay, one minute, give me one minute. Person who knew it is not there, we are just doing it now. One do one call. Thank you. 
What is that? Sorting. Did you call someone? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Call somebody from what is happening? We're trying here. So, there are three options basic, advanced, and finance. Can we, am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. You are audible. So, can I uh, start? Sir, first I'll introduce you, then we'll start your session. Okay. I'm ready now. Thanks. Good morning, all. Welcome to day four of Faculty Development Program on Anti Doping and Sports Science. Today we have with us very legendary personality, Dr. Ali Irani. Dr. Irani is presently working as a head of department, physiotherapy, sports medicine and rehabilitation center at Nanavati Super Specialist Hospital, Mumbai. He is also a chairperson in International Affairs, Indian Association of Physiotherapists and principal at NMIMS University. He has been he has been in this profession for more than 35 years. He served as a physiotherapist for the Indian cricket team in 1987 to 1997. Dr. Irani is an active member 
of Board of Study at NMIMS University. Dr. Irani has presented many research papers on knees mobility, backache, hammer of, uh, hammer tone for frozen shoulders, fitness and sports injuries, and held workshop on innovation physiotherapy and sports medicine at various national and international conferences. Dr. Irani has set up physiotherapy and rehabilitation center in Bhuj, Gujarat for the earthquake victims. He's also serving as an examiner and lecturer for students of Master of Finance specialization with dance at Mumbai University and PhD guide at various universities in India. He has received many awards like Lifetime Achievement Award by Indian Association of Physiotherapy in 2004. He awarded fellowship by Indian Association of Sports Medicine and Physiotherapist in 2005. Best Citizen of India, uh, India Award in 2011. Best Physiotherapist in India from Medscape in 2014 and many more. Sir is a patron member of Indian Association of Physiotherapists, mm -hmm. life member of Indian Association of Sports Medicine, Vice President of Bombay District Sports Medicine, Gujarat Physiotherapy Council, and Maharashtra OTPT Council. Today, Dr. Irani will be talking on recent trends in sports medicine. Now, not taking much time and would like to invite our subject experts, Dr. Irani, to take the charge of the session. Over to you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the slight delay, which was due to technical uh, hitch happening here. Um, that's the hospital I work for. Um, it's fixed for them, no? Oh. Oh, good boy. It's not moving now. It's not going to next. Sorry again. No problem, sir. If you are comfortable, you can share your PPT with me and uh, we will take care from our end. Let's start again. Share it. Just give me a minute. Just a minute. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Don't move the next. Close this. Love it. Go next. Not go from here. Not go from there. What? You can try this. Fine. Okay. I'm okay now. So I can go up there. Okay. But it's moving on its own. It's moving. So see from here. You can go on this side. I want to go from there. Okay. okay. Now I go next. Fine. Okay. Uh, our topic is uh, sports, recent trend in sports medicine. So just want to explain you all uh, how sports became a profession. Going back uh, 35 years back, if a sportsman was representing India or representing playing for the country, uh, that was not enough for them. They had to they, they had to work somewhere. They were working in bank, Tata Sports, then Tata companies. They were in railways. They were in uh, Larson and Tubro company. They were in cement companies. So with gradually with time in this last 30 years, sports became a profession. 
Now, if a person needed to be a sports person, it was very important that he keeps his peak fitness because sports is competition. So he has to always be competing with his uh, other counterpart. And to remain in peak fitness is what we are going to talk today and how you are going to manage that. So uh, what, is, what is bringing the sportsman into uh, not being a good sportsman? One of the two things that is there, they always have a fear of failure and they, there is a constant pressure on them if they don't perform. So because sports is a competition. So some of the qualities of uh, sports people, they are highly strung. They are always under tension. They are unreasonable. They dislike rest and they resent any disability. So uh, as far as uh, it's concerned, the last word, which I don't put it, uh, this thing, I always say that they are abnormal because the way they behave, the way they ask questions, the way they want to know things, uh, which would be very awkward for any of our uh, uh, professional to explain them. You cannot give an answer for everything. With uh, following slides, we will gradually know how they are. So what are the recent trends? Basically, the job of physiotherapist is not only treating as a sports person, right? but here the idea is uh, we know all the injuries that a sportsman can get. So our focus of a physiotherapist has sh started shifting on the word prevention. We know all sports have got injuries. So whatever best we can do to prevent the injury, because we know they will get injured. So what all best we could do to prevent it? That becomes more. So the focus has been changes in this uh, 2000 onwards. So our focus has gone on prevention. I'm going to open this word fully. What is prevention? So if you see the word prevention, one, the sportsman has to remain in peak fitness, has to do regular training. Evaluation specific to the sports. So our job becomes to evaluate knowing uh, uh, to the sports that he plays, hockey, football, cricketer, weightlifter, WWF, they are all different way of evaluation. So we have to evaluate that. And then in a cricketer, there's a fast bowler, there's a spinner, there's a wicket keeper, there's a batsman. All the fitness is changes. The B is for vision, E is for endurance, N is for nutrition, technique, injury, overtraining, and the last N is for no to drugs. Uh, sportsmen cannot take drugs. So we come to the first word. So what is fitness? It's a dynamic state of a body that can define as a, which can do the maximum level of work by a sports person. So the best performance of any sportsman automatically becomes uh, the peak fitness of that sportsman. And it's very important that we keep on record We keep a record on them at the peak fitness. Like for cricketers, I should ask them to run one meter in number of runs. So if a sportsman could take 14 runs in one minute or 15 runs in one minute, somebody took 16 runs in a minute. So that was the peak performance of that sports person. So in football, I ask them to kick the ball. So how much the ball travels is the best of best of that sportsman. Or hopping, how much, how many meters they can hop or horizontal jump that they do. So these are the few parameters we need to keep of every sportsman if we are with a team to know the best performance of that sportsman. So right. So once, once that best performance is known, after that sports, sportsman gets injured, you have to reverse train, keep training the sportsman to come back to that same performance. Fitness, if I divide into two parts, we have a general fitness and sports specific. So in general fitness, overall warming up, stretching, everything comes in that. Then sports specific is depending what game they play and what position they play in the game. Like a goalkeeper and a person who is playing back or a person playing in forward in football, you know, there is specific uh, fitness which they require. Uh, the, the person playing forward requires a lot of endurance and speed, right? But a goalkeeper re requires a lot of flexibility. There's a difference. A fast bowler requires to come and run with uh, 20 meters of uh, run-up. 
where a spinner just takes four or five steps and does it. So that's how we separate them. I'll come a little more to it. So in general, fitness to remain peak fit, right? To have peak fitness, what all is necessary? The right body composition. In the right body composition, I would definitely tell you all, please check most of our sportsmen. Most of our sportsmen have lack of vitamin B12 and D3. Check the vitamin B12 and D3. The B12 should be between 400 and 800. D3 should be between 40 and 80. This is nothing to do with sportsmen, even normal people. Most of the Indian, maybe 60% of the Indian, especially vegetarians, have lack of vitamin D3 and B12. So if you are attached to any team, check the B12, D3. It will be less. I will show you later on in your question how to bring it up. This is one of the main causes. That is the right body composition requires that endurance, cardiovascular and muscular endurance, then the right flexibility and coordination and good strength. All this combined makes a, makes a sports person to come into peak fitness. So let's talk about sports specific fitness. As I said earlier, football as a defender, striker and a goalkeeper. So the specific training differs. In cricket, batsman, bowler, bowler, we have a fast bowler which take 18 to 20 steps and a spinner will hardly take 5 steps. So, there are specific training for them. Now, just imagine in runner, we have a short distance runner, 100 meter, 200 minute, they burst, they require speed. But in a long distance marathon runners, they have, they have to have a good endurance. Right? So, there's a difference in training. So, the person who is training for 2 hours a day running, doesn't require that two hours training in only running. Has to do short spurts of 100 and 200 meters. In throws, if you see the javelin throw and a hammer throw, the totally the muscle changes. All the, the joint remains the same, but the muscle changes. So it's important that you are sports specific when you are training a sportsman or when you are treating a sports person. What affects the peak fitness? There's a new pressure from the media. He was performed now, not performing. From the coach, I have given so much time to you. All my players have played for the country, but you could not play for your country. And from parents. The parents say, I wanted you to be a doctor, but now you have not studied. You went to sports. So now who will give you a job? What will happen? And there are ones a sportsman uh, is playing for the club, state, national or international level. They... Of course, all of us go through that problem of having, uh, whether we call it love or infatuation. I, I call it, it's more to do with infatuation because uh, people look at you at television for four hours, six hours a day. And uh, it could be infatuation, not love. So because most of the people who fall in love with a sportsman, they fall in love with that sports person and not that person individually. So there's a difference between that. So they all suffer. Most of the sportsmen fall into the trap, whether you want to call it love or infatuation. And many of our good sportsmen have uh, given or lost just because they failed in their love life. R is for regular training. So I divide training into two. You can have a training during the season, which you'll call it when the season is on. Now football seasons are on and indoor games are on. And then we have an off season. Suppose it is raining, you can't go out and play cricket. So that's an off-season for most of the games, which are uh, hockey, cricket. That's off-season for them. But football, it's an on-season for them. So during the season, a sportsman should train and uh, do warming up, train on the technique, play the game five days a week. And once a week, keep for the strength, endurance, go to the gym and work on what is uh, he's, uh, missing, whether the uh, flexibility is less, Speed is less, endurance is less, so or the strength. So do a lot of weight training. Off season mates exactly opposite. So five days a week, you are training for your strength, endurance, flexibility, and once a week go and train for the game you play. You have to play the game somehow, indoor or outdoor, and work on your uh, technique. But in both the cases, during the season and off season, please remember where we go wrong is one day complete rest. There's one day in a week that you should take complete rest. And when I say rest, it means taking breakfast, lunch and dinner on your bed. So don't even move anywhere. Give body rest because from Monday you are back into action. So uh, what will keep your engine tuned? Right? In physical conditioning, it is very important that you keep checking your strength, power, agility, flexibility, speed, endurance, balance, reaction, reflexes. 
putting all this together, you have to keep be doing it in a week's time, every week, so that whether you're on season or off season, you need to do this so that your engine remains still. So we come to the specific training. Uh, there are two types when we are talking about specific training. It is sport specific and age specific. So I will first talk about the sport specific to give example. See, a weight lifter will lift the weight 200 kgs, 250 kgs and drop it. He cannot pick it again. He uses maximum, he uses maximum uh, static strength. So he requires 15, 20 minutes to again come back and lift again. Right? But a gymnast will require a lot of flexibility. A cricketer, footballer, hockey player requires a lot of skill and coordination. So there it is more to do. Definitely endurance has to be there, but there has to be skill also and coordination also. So uh, when we divide, uh, and just for an example, to give you a much better example, we have WWF uh, wrestlers. So when you see a WWF wrestler, any of you can just slap, slap that person and go away. Because he is he's not even going to be interested to get up and try to catch you because he cannot. He cannot uh, run. He cannot. It, getting up, it's going to take five, six minutes for him. And then he's very slow. So he cannot. But if this WWF wrestler catches you, it holds you. Nobody can save you. They have enough static strength to keep you holding. Right? So this is a different when we are talking about sports specific. So you have to train according to sports specific also. Everybody's question, every parent's question today is when to join sports? When to join sports? So I will give a very, very simple example. This is a chart that I have made. Up to 12, allow the child. The role of the parents is up to 12, allow the child to play all the games. Let them awaken the interest, whether it's football, hockey, tennis, golf, swimming, whatever they want, allow them. Right? Between 12 and 14, usually a child decides which game he or she wants to play. The selection of sports come between 12 and 14. You improve the skills, so send them for a good coaching to the right coach. Correct the technique if they're doing any wrong technique. Right. So, usually between 12 and 14, they decide, they go towards uh, they go towards the sports that they like more, they stop training in other sports and uh, the gradual weight training is brought in by the good coach that we want uh, them to work better on that. Now, between 15 and 19, I'm not saying at 14 they don't become a champion, but between 15 and 19, most of these sportsmen become a professional. They have played for their school, college, university, for the state, for the club, or for the country. So they have become a pro professional. So what needs to go on is a better weight training. Specific training, as I said, depending what role they play in that game. So specific training is again guided by the coach. And they have to remain in peak fitness. Very important. If their fitness goes away, there's going to be a problem. So they have to remain in peak fitness. And once they cross 19, I say that they are a champion and they have to do high intensity training to keep the best performance and to remain a champion. Uh, again, age specific training, uh, science has proved, a lot of studies have proved that low resistance and high reputation are proved to be more beneficial to children. So it is not that a child cannot do weight training. So please, a child is allowed to do weight training. A child can do weight training, but less weight and more reputation. Very simple. Less weight, more reputation. Child can grow and it doesn't hamper the height. Please, children who are doing sports, they get better height than children not doing exercise. So there is nothing like if my child does weight. Many of the parents say, we give weight training to a child. Everybody says the height won't grow. No, no, no. All those who have been doing weight training, they have a good height. So it's nothing to do with height. So when I'm talking about evaluation uh, for a doctor or a sports medicine specialist, a physiotherapist has to look at the general health of a sports people, ask the training history, the previous history, any injury has happened, predisposing factors, any psychological condition, whether the technique was changed. Sometimes they change the technique and they get injured. Always examine the normal site. Very important. 
excess assess any referred pain whether if they're talking about neck pain whether pain is coming down the shoulders if they're talking about a back pain whether the back pain comes down the down the leg it's very important to see the referred pain nutrition usually i will advise all of them as soon as a sportsman is injured please work on their nutrition because they will eat the same so if they're out of the game for 15 days and they eat the same they'll put on weight because it, they practice three, four hours and they more, burn more calories. Once they're injured, they don't work out. So the burning of calories is not there, but the eating remains the same. So in a week time, they would put at least two kgs of weight, which will, in, which, which will interfere in the game again. And what do they do for work and leisure? Usually, I will say if a cricketer is coming to his room, to his house or hotel room and watching cricket again, so it's, he will get stale. So we always tell every sportsman to select another game for watching on television. You have to divert your attention into some other game. So for what you do for work and leisure is very important. Some people, they are cricketers or footballers. They come back home in the building. They are again playing football or they are again playing cricket. But it should not be the same game. You have to have the second game in all sports people. Investigation has no substitute. Please, for a sports person, if they are injured, do all the possible tests, MRI, X-ray, blood test, scanning, whatever is necessary. Because the press is not going to leave you. So the press wants exactly what has happened. And to know exactly what has happened, you need investigation. So don't substitute with anything uh, as far as investigation is concerned. Uh, next word, vision, V from the prevention word, V is for vision. And every, every sportsman's vision is to win the World Cup or get gold medal. So one of the things that I saw, what comes in between them, always I tell the sportsmen, play for your country and not for. So we had a player who had very well told me uh, when I had gone uh, during the drinks on the field, Tell me, okay, my uh, girlfriend is sitting with a green T-shirt. So please take care of her. See that she's comfortable there. And uh, when the next ball, when he got out, he came. I said, you could see her 700 meters away. And you could not see a ball which was 20 meters away. Right? So we need... I always say, okay, when you lose, you lose everything. Right? So uh, success has many fathers. Failure is an orphan. So you have to be only focusing on your game and not anything else. Endurance is by endurance. We have cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance. It's measured to RM method. And uh, we are testing VO2 max to Bruce protocol for cardiovascular endurance. What is the myth in this sports people? Uh, till now, it was said the high protein is the best choice of energy. So it's been failed. We, we believe now that it's the a carbohydrate with the fuel. So what should be the ratio? So 60 to 70% can be carbohydrate, 20 to 30% could be protein. Only the fat content has to be less in sportsmen, except a marathon runner. Usually marathon runners, fat contents are always below normal. Usually we people have 18 to 22% of fat, which is normal. But most of the Indians have 32% and 35% fat in the body because of the way we eat. Our, we need puris, we need samosas, we need kachoris, we need deep fried. Our vegetables also go through the system of frying and then we again make it. So dal also, you want dal fry. So we take a lot of extra intake, which I will be uh, showing you in other slides. So protein diet versus carbohydrate diet. So for a sportsman during the event, I'm not saying. So uh, early morning, if your event is early morning, then go on high carbohydrate. But if it is by evening, then you can have very good protein in the morning. Again, go for carbohydrate two to three hours before your events. What does protein diet do? It elevates the resting metabolic rate. More energy is required for burning of protein. But other way around, carbohydrate is a main source of energy for aerobic and anaerobic activities. So when you're walking, jumping, running, practicing, please remember your fuel is Fuel is carbohydrate. Like you have, a, you have put petrol in your car. But if you put kerosene in the car, it will work. But there are a lot of jerky moments. So similarly, your body while performing, while doing any activities, carbohydrate is the main fuel. So it's not that if you have fat or protein, it won't. You won't be able to. It won't be that easy 
uh, for burning the fuel than the way you burn the carbohydrate. Usually everybody asks, what is a pre-competition meal? I always say good hydration, good hydration, a lot of water. Thirst is a signal that the body requires fluid, right? So I always say okay, from before your event starts or exercise starts, two hours before, say, start drinking water. Even between uh, when you are playing or running, if you feel thirsty, definitely have water because thirst is a signal that the body requires fluid. Uh, T for technique says good practice makes a good sports person, but practicing the perfect techniques makes him a champion. So please, once you have got the right technique, keep practicing that so that you become, you remain a champion. So a physiotherapist uh, should regularly evaluate the sports person for strength and flexibility at least once a month. Change in technique to be done only in off season. Usually, what happens? Uh, I'll tell you a story of a weightlifter. We had a weightlifter gone to Canada. When she was lifting weight, just on the evening of the of the event, the next day morning event, on the e one evening before, the coach said, if you change the technique to this, you may lift more and from silver medal, you may, you may get gold medal. So when the technique was changed, she could not uh, do it well. And next day she got injured. She got a shoulder dislocation and even the bronze medal went away. So never change. I will say change all the techniques in off season, not during the season. Just an example of throw. Next time when you are seeing such throws, uh, look at the cricketer. If the chest is seen, the ball will go right to the wicketkeeper or the bowler. But when you see the shoulder, you know, sideways is throwing, the ball accuracy reduces. So it's not going to be, uh, not going to be that ball reaching the right place. So just it's a technique. So your your uh, twisting of your lumbar of your low back has to move to get the right throws. So we'll come to the injuries now. So I will open up all the injuries. One of the main reasons why we get injured is I'm just talking on that to you. See, most of our grounds are like this. Poor grounds for training. And we have such grounds also. So now see where the attention of the sportsman will be going, where the attention of the sportsman will be going if he's playing on such ground. He's more bothered to see he doesn't uh, go and hit the tree rather than playing the game. Then uh, we always say that socks should be worn on shoes. But uh, most of our athletes, when they start their career, they are uh, without shoes. And look at the pebbles around. Right? This was one of the... Uh, one of the camp that we were having to select sportsmen for Mumbai district. Shoes, very important. You can't play football with a hockey shoe. You can't play hockey with the cricket shoes. Every sports, indoor, outdoors, have their own shoes. Again, in cricket, a fast baller's shoe will have spikes when he's bowling fast. And when he wants to run between the wicket or the wicket is really uh, full of grass, they would like to have with the shoes with the spikes. Uh, you can't play badminton, uh, uh, play badminton with the tennis shoes. So please focus, check the shoes. I would request the coaches and those who are involved with the sports people, they, uh, they keep uh, with the worn out shoes also. I always want to see a sportsman with the shoes because I see which side is more worn out. The heel side, the lateral side, medial side. So they are overusing. They are overusing one side of their uh, uh, shoes. So very important to check the shoes. Insufficient warm up and stretching is one of the cause of injuries. Please give time. When they come, don't allow your sportman just straight to run. There should be some stretching before running. Then warm up by running or jogging or uh, run. Uh, what do you speeding? And then comes the stretching. Good time. I always feel 30 minutes to 45 minutes should be given for warm-up and stretching before uh, you start your event to avoid injuries. I call it the dirty dozen. So this exercise when your sportsman is doing requires evaluation. A proper evaluation so they don't bring, uh, uh, they don't bring that extra stress for the low back or a knee joint or hip joint. Very important. All the, I, I really call it dirty dozen because when we ask the sportsmen, they come with injury. 
uh, they were just got up and start come to the ground and done any of this movement or all of this movement to get injured. Incorrect sports kit. Every sports has their own kit. Please see that the right kit is used. Just showing you the cricket. The visor has to be worn in such a way between the helmet and the visor. It should be distance will be so much that the ball should not pass through. But a batsman loves to take his visor below down so that he can see more. And that's how when this ball hits the nose, very difficult. We had many players who had got the ball directly hit on the nose. Very difficult and uh, we have to straight go to the hospital to stop the bleeding. Uh, the right uh, girth measurement of the uh, for tennis, any racket, whether it is uh, the cricket, we have, we have seen uh, cricketers going for surgeries when the grip was more or less. Badminton, tennis, squash. Uh, I will just show you the simple formula how to do it. You have to take a foot ruler between the mid palm line, the mid line in the palm up to the tip of your finger. That distance should be your grip. So everybody's grip is different. Every individual grip is different. So if they're using any of the grip game, including sometime when, you're, when you do a long driving, the steering that you're holding should have the right grip. So if you are not having the right grip, definitely you will be having tennis elbow. Then you can be having golfer's elbow. You'll be having pain at the elbow joint. One of the reasons. <clears throat> then type of sports. Certain sports, the injury is part of it. See football. Falling on each other is a part of sports. Rugby. I call rugby no more a game. It's a knee disease. See, one of the rule is you can go, you can bash into the knee of the opponent. So, uh, you will be seeing that maximum injuries which happen in rugby in knee joint is because the opposition player has just gone and pushed himself inside the knee joint. Boxing, you cannot win if you have not hit the guy enough so that he cannot get up. So, some sports have injuries part of it. Now, strategies of preventing the injuries are two, intrinsic and uh, extrinsic. So, if it is an intrinsic injury, avoid training or playing when injured. Please, very important. At least next 72 hours if you are injured, till you rule out that the injury is not bad, keep applying ice and don't do any training. Proper warm-up and cool-down to avoid the injuries. Weekly rest. Again, once a week, complete rest is very, very important. Extrinsic injury, how we will tackle it? Environmental condition, consideration. You are at a cold country. I remember our team had, uh, our, our train was trained at a place where it was very cold. And then we went to Kuwait to play a football match and playing at a 52 degree temperature, which our players were not used to. Very, very difficult. So train your sportsmen at an environment where they are going to play the game. So don't train in Kashmir, Srinagar and go and play in Chennai, where the weather would be humid. So, train your people at a humid time, at, at Mumbai, Chennai, Calcutta, where humidity is same. So, they, the body gets used to it. Right. Now, if a, a, a player is injured, so please, I call it avoid harmful things. And what are the harmful things? Heat, alcohol, rubbing movement. I've seen patient in North. Patient gets injured, they give him alcohol so they can do the massage and rub it more. You are injuring that person more, right? Pain is a signal that something is wrong somewhere. So be alert, right? So don't get yourself drunk so that you know where the pain is. So we come to know what is the injury because pain is a signal. Thirst is a signal that the body requires water, body requires fluid. Pain is a signal that there is something wrong somewhere. So you cannot let the professional find out what is wrong and correct it. So no rubbing, no doing movements. There are a lot of over, we call it overtraining syndrome. When a, when a sportsman does not perform well, they overtrain themselves. They go for training, they're doing twice a day, thrice a day, they will increase. Now, what happens when you're overtraining, right? From whatever it is happening, there are a lot of physiological and psychological changes because you are, you are crossing the limit for them. I'll just say what happens. So, effects of overtraining syndrome. If I have to ask my sportsmen uh, to know, I want to rule out overtraining syndrome. See the last one. The last under psychological is sleep disturbances. As soon as you know he's not sleeping well, 
you have to find out found find out the rest then start from one so there will be a decrease speed decrease endurance so your decrease speed will know okay, what was the speed of the sportsman that's why you should have the peak performance of every sportsman so when it is reduced you come to know is it overtraining syndrome there is a decrease endurance decrease strength decrease heart rate recovery time suppose first the heart rate was going to 140 but in 2 minutes it was coming back to normal to 80 But here, what will happen? It does uh, heart rate has gone to 140, but even after five minutes, it is still 100. It is 110. So there is a decrease heart rate recovery time in overtraining. Poor concentration. They keep hitting their leg here and there, and they keep falling also, right? And then in physiological, there is an increased heart rate, increased weight loss. They go to uh, bathroom regularly. There is uh, soreness of the muscle and frequent over injuries. You know. you you keep getting injured uh, when you are overtraining now psychologically there is fatigue you don't feel like you feel lazy there is depression le- restless they keep walking they can't sit somewhere um, lack of confidence and the last one which i use it as the first one sleep disturbance now what do we do what we will do to overcome this so prevention of overtraining syndrome most of the sportsmen have it increase the hydration they drink 2 liters of water make it 3 liters increase the number uh, the water intake individualize the exercise program ask him show me your training program change it reduce it increase their sleep even if you have to give them tablet increase their sleep if they're sleeping 6 hours make it 8 hours if they're sleeping 8 hours make it 9 hours again get back to their proper stretching and cool down cool down is important usually i say if you stretch if you are warming up for half an hour your cool down should be 15 minutes half the time cooling down i prefer on the floor on the ground floor after the game is over and lot of stretching exercises or yoga exercises on the floor sufficient rest increase the rest that is increase the sleep this is how you will bring them back to the normal sleep and this is how you are going to bring them back from overtraining syndrome last one no no to drugs of course all of you all know about doping all the coaches know about doping and and the sportsmen know better than you about doping they go and find out a list what is doping but every year there are new thing comes so by the time the olympic committee knows about it they have done the job but again if you are not good they would be caught again so ban drug any ban drug i have a list of it a list of it so administration of any ban drug they can in any form cough syrup form tablet form ayurveda form the through through the hakim uh, hakim what they make and give you through that form through injection form any form to iv form in any form that you are going to take anything which was not allowed is called doping that's a list the currently banned drugs by uh, international olympic committee but it keeps increasing it keeps increasing so you cannot say that you are going to be on one of it it uh, definitely keeps increasing every year a new thing comes especially in ayurveda and yunani medicine a lot of things comes it takes time for olympic committee to find out in sports what we have last 12 years i have been working on is brain mapping to understand a sportsman brain very interesting subject i won't be able to explain everything because itself it's a subject by an hour talk by itself but this is how brain looks all of us have the left and the right side of brain the right controls the rhythm pictures dimension imagination the left is more into mathematic analysis language and logic but i put it the left side is a male brain it's like box they go to the box to the work come out it's only a female brain that can do multitasking at one time they can be uh, listening to this they're already on phone talking to somebody else and they're writing and typing something and they're already discussing and imagining when this lecture will get over so i could go back to my work so multitasking can be done by a female much better than males uh why i am showing you this slides on uh, brain mapping i want the coaches to know that a tongue can lie but a brain cannot so there are this uh, five zones that we have separated the brain into when we are fast asleep it is delta zone our brain works 2 to 4 hertz what is hertz its amplitude per second so 
when you see the ecg of heart it is something similar which will be shown uh, when we do eeg of the brain so if the frequency is 2 to 4 per second they are sleeping theta is they always want just want to get up it's between 5 to 7 but 8 to 12 is alpha maximum sportsmen have got the best results when they were performing into alpha zone then beta is low medium and high they are going into lot of uh, confusion gamma is total confusion they can't decide they cannot focus i hope i get the film uh, this is the slide how it will look uh, we convert we have a small eg machine which is portable we take the frequency from the forehead three leds going on the forehead we take the frequency and left and right side brain what you look there is an application which converts the good spikes that hurts into mushroom so what you see extreme right is gamma and what you see extreme left will be the mid somewhere towards the left is the alpha zone sorry my videos are not working uh because with all the problem that i had initially uh this is how it will look this is slide alpha zone pure alpha zone what is alpha zone healing positive thinking awareness and enhanced focus so i've done on lot of sports people i've just asked them the best game you have played so a sportsman imagines the best game he has ever played made 200 runs so we find out there is an alpha zone now we ask the same sportsman think of or imagine of the worst game you have played we see them in gamma zone so alpha zone is a zone and then i have gone on 1000 young students 1000 young students college students i have told them think you are enjoying with your friends you are enjoying with your friends they are in alpha zone but as soon as i talk about exams there will be exams tomorrow i i just heard your principal announcing exam tomorrow they go in gamma zone straight so gamma zone is a zone where we cannot so our, my uh, idea of doing study on sports people was to get maybe one day we will get one simple tablet one tablet they will take and they will go in alpha zone they will go and perform better this science is new and through this we come to know about the injury they cannot hide the injury let sportsmen say anything they want if i put them on brain mapping i'll come to know whether they are injured or not or they are hiding the injury or not the beta zone is something like that complex mental functioning seen in anxiety hypertension and uh, gamma is too many thoughts if you see down that is the eeg waves comes like this see per second so many comes so so many means 30 to 42 per second these are the hertz or uh, what do you call it the amplitudes so too many thoughts seen in anxiety person cannot focus so if a sportsman cannot focus you are not going to get that result so usually in gamma gamma zone they don't get good results so let me just talk individually on all the all the zones we have delta zone uh, we have theta alpha beta gamma so let's talk about alpha you are relaxed and alert integration of feeling heightened awareness your awareness is too and you are focused but in gamma stress tension anxiety and beta is very close to gamma so i would prefer anybody uh, a sportsman or as a professional If you are a good teacher, you should be in alpha zone. Don't go when you are in gamma zone. Your stress, your anger, you remove it on your on your students. So I always feel, uh, hopefully, I even want uh, the mobile rings to be such that when you hear it, you go in alpha zone. We are working on that part also. So to come in alpha zone, meditation is alpha zone. So when you do, if you are a good, uh, if you are good in meditation, definitely you can get yourself into alpha zone whenever you want. so the brain wave pattern of various sportsmen was studied and it showed them in alpha zone 8 to 12 hertz that is 8 to 12 frequency per second when they were in peak performance of winning and other way round when sportsmen did not perform well or had injury they were found in beta or gamma zone so we have studying through uh, the brains about sportsmen so a physiotherapist today not only prevent or treat injuries but can also prepare the sportsman to be in alpha state of his or her best performance so january whenever your university opens and when i come towards because i come to sanjan regularly uh, my hometown is sanjan that is near wapi when i am there definitely when your college is open i would love to come and meet your coaches and your students and talk to them more about uh what is the future of uh, 
training the sports people how this is alpha zone it's a slide sorry it was a movie i can't play the movie if i try doing anything now i will go off screen so there are hardly a uh, few uh, uh, slides left so i want to uh, go through it like that i won't be able to show you the videos uh, this is the uh, click of alpha zone Okay, sorry, this was also a film which would have shown you Alpha Zone. <laughs> now, uh, Beta and Gamma will look like that. So, I always say an injured sportsman. So, he doesn't want to say he's injured, right? So, tongue can lie, brain cannot. So, how I catch it is I uh, uh, put them on brain mapping and just keep talking to them, right? And as soon as, uh, if they are injured, they are trying to hide. So, this is how the pattern will come. So, through brain wave. Many, many people, we know that people, uh, police uses it, uses brain mapping to find out that the person is saying truth or not. So it's something like that. The uh, It's not a rocket science. Through so EEG, we have found out, we have separated the zones. We now know which zone a person has done well, which zone it doesn't do well. So even an injury zone, we can find out. So there is something called alpha therapy. So if you can bring your sportsman into the alpha state, it enhances healing, enhances concentration and focus and can bring the sportsman back. We have different methods of getting uh, a sportsman into alpha zone. This is a case study of a cricketer, opening baller. So this was the first day when we had, before putting him in alpha zone, this is how it was. Sorry, this, what you see, the mushrooms, it's an application. We convert the peak, the average of the waves, we convert them into uh, a mushroom so it looks better to be presentable we are using this because if I have to show you in an EEG form we won't this is for our layman which to understand otherwise only a neurologist will understand the EEG pattern and they would read it so our method is this so this is a uh, opening baller then we put him on alpha session so when we had put that baller in alpha session uh, if you go to see the first week may he took four wickets for 32 runs, then took three wickets for three runs, and then took two wickets for 40 runs, and then uh, six wickets for 22 runs. It's career best. So it definitely, we have proven it that, yes, uh, brain mapping can help in sports. So brain mapping is going to be the next generation food, uh, food of thought for the physiotherapists and those who are in sports medicine. And I'm sure... Uh, when we are there, I want some of your students to do PhD in brain mapping with those because you all are into a uh, physical education. So in short, in nutshell, to, before I end and finish it, uh, uh, sports medicine has a price to pay. So prevention is one. Earlier, it was only ice. Uh, apply ice, compression, elevation. Then we brought rest in it. In 90s, we brought rest, add rest to it. And in 2000, we were forced to bring P in it, and the P was prevention. So prevention is more important. We know by now what injuries they can get. So I say cure is the whisper of past, but to prevent is the divine voice of today. So let's all work toward prevention so that we don't get injured. Picked up from uh, Holy Quran. It says, he who heals one of my human being has healed my mankind. So please be in a healing profession Treat your sportsmen well, be nice to them, see what you can guide them, heal them, and definitely you will be raised. I've finished, Janvi. You can, uh, I'm open to questions. Thank you so much, sir. I'm, I'm uh, visible and I'm audible for the questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come out of sharing. No, no, no. Ask me questions. Very good afternoon to all. We are from the Department of Physical Education, Oru University. Hi, Dr. Sharma. Yeah, before you present our vote of thanks, I would like to thank students' guest speaker, Dr. Ali Irani to accept our invitations and share very informative information with us on recent train in sports medicine. Please accept my thanks for your brilliant presentation to FDP participants. 
we are grateful for the time and efforts you took to share your thoughts and experience with us thank you sir thank you to all participants for their active participations and now we will move to forward question answer session over to janu ma'am thank you neeraj uh, sir all the participants are requesting to uh, for your ppt so if you will allow and if you will share with me i will share with them definitely i will i love to take permission from our institute okay. and as university and then i'll send it to you thank you thank you so much sir uh, so let's move on for the question answer session is i can see so many questions are there so i'll start with the question asked by dr jignesh tandil is asking that what is sin splint how is different from the stress fracture come again i didn't hear what is what is sin splint how is different from stress fracture sin splints usually it will sin splints it's it happens on the hard ground and not a proper footwear one this is if you are 18 plus and if you are below 18 uh, we got something we call something that like osgood syndrome which is at the knee area where the tibia the bone grows first your height comes from there and it comes to some people at the shin level so if your vitamin d3 is not good enough that means the uh, concentration or the density of your bone doesn't become good and that will give you pain on your shin when because when you are banging on the ground hard ground that's the time that there is a split it's not a fracture it's a split if you just apply ice it heals back so all those who are complaining of shin split after the event after the sport they should apply ice for at least uh, 20 minutes to half an hour and increase the vitamin d3 level vitamin d3 is important so that you know density of the bone growth and those who are non veg the best is to have paya soup paya masala or paya soup which i don't know will be available there it's one of the best thing for sportsmen to bring their vitamin d3 up thank you sir uh, there's one more question uh, is ice protocol still exist to treat acute sports injury or cryotherapy is remove is ice protocol i the uh, cryotherapy and uh, applying ice is same so at a place where nothing is available just put ice cubes in break ice and put it in a plastic bag and leave it to that place wherever it is paining at least for next 3 days till help arrives and some professional examines you it is not a fracture it is not a hairline it is not a tendon injury or a ligament injury so till that time ice is the safest not massage thank you thank you sir i request all the participants to ask your question in a, a question answer column in chat it is going so fast so i'm not able to read it uh, there's next question from uh, dr rustam sadri in case of uh, aggressive sports like boxing judo wrestling most of the players may be in gamma state as per their characteristics of sports how it overcome to alpha state one uh, reassurance at treating them so any movement without pain that they do movement without pain that means the the this normalcy of the joint and once that is came you are telling when you get back into training and they start performing the uh, the confidence gets build up so it's a process from gamma to bring to alpha it's a different ways which modality you select one is getting them all right removing the pain from them so they know now they are fine right and then uh, reassuring them that yes you can do it again okay great so mr uh, deepak is asking that what is the source of b12 for vegetarian athlete only milk from the same cow milk not from the bazaar getting milk from any uh, market is different cow there are many cows and buffaloes together so it's not you should your body should get earlier days every village at every village every house had a cow for themselves so the milk used was from the same cow if you are going to do that it gives you enough uh, enough all vitamins including vitamin d otherwise you have to go for uh, the different uh, there are mega neuron tablets capsules there is methyl cobalt capsules uh, you will have to go for uh, compensation through medicine of course non veg chicken has no value 
if those are in non veg chicken has no value b12 will only come from red meat mutton lamb and fish to an extent so your sportsman uh, food should be more to do with red meat and uh, those who are non vegetarian sorry uh, red meat and uh, fish uh, for me chicken has no value okay there are reasons which i have to talk a lot and explain why same thing is the milk milk from the market no it should be from the same cow okay body should get used to that com uh, the uh, comp the composition of the milk of the same cow so body gets used to the same how mother used to give you the milk it was the same mother mothers were not changed and the cow also gives milk for their own calf but we are human beings you know we know how to train them we know how to fool them and take the milk Uh, sir, there is one more question. Uh, that's what? Uh, what are the simple way to apply brain mapping to upcoming sports students? See, it's a course. Once you know how to do brain mapping, it's an EEG portable. Then it has to go on an application on your laptop. So, if you can do it and you understand the frequencies, once you learn how to separate the zones, when you are reading the EEG, you should come to know in which zone the person is. Then it's easy to apply. Okay. Uh, so, Doctor Ram uh, wants to know that what are the difference between cramp and a pull? Between cramp and pull. Cramp and pull. P U W L L. Pull. I didn't get it. What was the word? Cramps and pull. Pulling. Pull. Okay. Okay. Pull. Muscle pull. Muscle pull. a uh, cramp uh, comes uh, due to lactic acid when the oxygen is less lactic acid is the biggest enemy of sportsmen so there's a big lecture which can be spoken only on lactic acid you should see that lactic acid does not come into your body the sportsmen so early so increase your vital capacity again it's a big science to increase the lung capacity most of the indians have 2 liters all the covid patient were below 1 and 1/2 liter so we need to increase the vital capacity the lung capacity if we increase only 20% air is having oxygen so it's a big subject how to delay it. and pull is you have pulled the muscle it was not warmed up not stretched so it, you pull the muscle okay uh, sir uh, one participants has asked that technology has replaced role of physiotherapist do you agree many portable devices are introduced and athlete are using on field and off field what are your comments for the same there was a ship which was not working for 6 month a ship had fall and many engineers used to go to repair it and they were playing every time 10000 rupees 20000 rupees they were paying for that uh, ship to be repaired nobody could repair it in 6 months so they got a guy and that guy said ke hey, i'm going to charge you 50000 rupees and in 5 minutes i'll start the ship He said, "Go ahead." So he got a hammer and banged some hammer on the ship, on the engine, wherever he had to. So the ship started. So he said, "To do have hammering a place, you took fifty thousand rupees." He said, "No, no, no. For hammering, it was only one thousand rupees. That forty-nine thousand rupees from where to hit." So definitely, there are so many machines you don't require. When I was a student, there were only seven physiotherapy colleges. today there are 300 physiotherapy colleges so i think so he says it all still this country requires 2 lakh physiotherapists we are only 60000 60 i won't say how many colleges we need but india needs japan is a small country japan has 1 lakh 25000 physiotherapists compared to india only 60000 i hope that answers the question yes yes sir so there are so many questions so uh, i'll i'll take one or two more question and uh, if you will allow uh, i will share your email address with all the participants so they can reach you directly well i won't be able to reply all the emails because i see myself i have to see 300 patients a day in nanavati with at least one webinar a day somewhere agree sir <laughs> okay. we'll take some one or two more questions all the question and then make it into common because there will be repetition Yes. you tell me all the question which after seeing all the one and then the answers you can email to everybody 
Sure, sir. I will do that. Uh, I'll take the last question of this uh, uh, today's session. That is, having plant nutrition is good or not? Plant nutrition. What was it? I think uh, she is talking about Ayurveda. Yes, I, I was just uh, last Saturday was uh, Global Wellness Day. I was at an Ayurveda center. Why not? Ayurveda is all the, it's the oldest form of medicine, has everything. You should know how to use it. Yes, sir. See, a knife given to a surgeon saves a life. A knife given to a criminal, it takes a life. So the fault is not with the knife. Fault is how you use it. True, sir. Ayurveda, how you are going to use it. That's important. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, again, for your brilliant presentation, all the participants are really liking the way you are presenting. You have shared so many difficult things in a very easy way. I'm also loving your presentation. This is my third presentation I am, you know, attending with you. And we look forward for more sessions from you, sir. Thanks all the participants for, for your active participation. Thank you very much. You all get a feedback link and you are able to fill the feedback uh, form for today's session. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.